I was uh, diagnosed in 2008 with Crohn's disease. My body doesn't recognise uh, my bowels or my intestines anymore. I noticed uh, blood in my stools and um, weren't really too fussed because I didn't have any um, symptoms at the time. By 2012 it got so bad that I needed, needed the operation. Um, I've had four big operations since then. Um, in 2012 I had the big one. I've been a young, strong, fit, healthy lad since a very young age. We don't know why it happens. It affects um, people of all ages, backgrounds, cultures and religions and that sort of thing, you know, from three-year-olds to men and women, um, but more commonly known amongst the 20, uh, 20 sort of 30-year-olds. How's it going guys? It's Cash from Cream Developments and welcome to episode two. I hope you guys enjoyed episode one, but this time we take you behind the scenes as we prepare and get ready for the Christmas cruise that we are hosting this Saturday in central London. Um, we've been spending all day getting the G-Wagon ready as it came in some weeks ago to have some rectification work done for the bodywork. Um, the car was vandalised quite badly, it was keyed up all around, so we had to remove the entire body kit, including the bumpers and redone the entire thing and put it back together. So. In this episode, you'll see the boys working in the background um, tirelessly around the clock to get this car ready once again um, for this event this weekend. This time, it's going to be sporting our brand new exclusive bonnet for the G-Wagon and a rear roof spoiler that we'll also be getting on. Um, again, never been seen before, first time, so that will be an exclusive on this car again. So keep locked, stay tuned and follow the build. Cruise is in support of uh, my good friend Hussein from Hussein's house. Um, he's been our host for, for many, many years now, taking care of main stage and hosting our events that we've held throughout the country. Um, and he's just had a huge opportunity that's basically catapulted his career into oblivion, literally. Um, he was uh, narrowed down from 90,000 applicants. Uh, for a competition that he applied for and he won. He came into the last three and he won the competition. So he has won a trip into space. Um, part of his, his uh, whole campaign, he's supporting uh, mental health. Mental health mental health matters, um, especially to him um, and many others around the world, including me. So we are supporting him in that campaign and we're gonna uh, revolve this whole cruise around that. All of a sudden I started having really bad pains right across my stomach um, area. Uh, I would have sleepless nights. Um, there were days in which I couldn't go to the toilet. Um, and then, you know, burning sensations. Oh, the, 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 the suffering was just unreal. You know, it was, it got so bad. Um, and then eventually what the doctor said was, you know, we have to operate on you and cut a section of your intestine out, which was, you know, <clears throat> I think around eight or nine inches, you know. Um, the intestine itself is really, really big anyway, so there's no issues with removing a certain amount, but where they had to remove it from with me was in my small intestine, and it was by where it joins the large intestine, yeah? So if you understand the human body, <clears throat> the small intestine is where, um, where food goes into your mouth, goes into your stomach, there's like a litre of acid there, always waiting to break the... Uh, food down so from there on it passes into the small intestine now in the, in the small intestine the reason why it's so long if you see it in the pictures the reason why it's so long is because that's how long it takes <clears throat> for the body to be able to extract all the nutrition from it yeah break it down 
Um, and that's where my issue is. It's not in the large colon. The large colon is where it's, uh, you know, it turns into poo, basically. Um, it's dried out, the water sucked out of it, and, you know, it solidifies, if you like. And, um, but that's not where my issue is. My issue is in the small intestine. Now, where the small intestine joins the large intestine, they cut that section off that was damaged, and they rejoin the good parts. Um, but in doing so, they had to remove the little doors, the, the sphincter, um, and that little trap door is the door that opens up to let the food pass from the small intestine into the large intestine. Now, I don't have that door anymore, so which means I don't really have real control over um, how often I have to go to the toilet. Sometimes I'm fine, you know, I could be sitting there talking to you next minute, oof, I've got to run, do you know what I mean? Um, obviously I can control it, I don't crap myself or anything like that, but um, it's just not pleasant, it's not normal anymore, do you know what I mean? Um, to be honest, I can't remember the last time I felt normal, you know? Um, I would give anything to feel like a normal person again, but <clears throat> I've been using um, the medication they've been giving me now, which is uh, different types of medication depending on how bad I am at the time, but generally they're all steroids um, and they're designed to weaken my immune system, so it puts my immune system to sleep, so my immune system stops attacking me. Now that on itself has adverse effects as well, um, one of them being that I'm you know, prone to catching illnesses. <clears throat> so I've always got to be careful who I hang around um, or if, you know, especially if someone's sick around me, I, I need to keep my distance. Um, and in, in the years and years of, of using these steroids, um, it, it uh, shut down my adrenal gland. Um, so the adrenal gland itself is, an, is another gland which uh, it produces um, a steroid, natural steroid called uh, hydrocortisone. And that steroid uh, is released into the body every day, every morning, and it's crucial to living. Um, all of these things I just learned, obviously, because of my illness. Otherwise, I wouldn't really know about it. I would have just carry on doing my thing, working on cars, <laughs> and just getting on with life. Um, but obviously, you end up having to educate yourself, especially when you... I mean, <clears throat> I, I recommend this with anybody. It's my phone going in the back. <laughs> um, I recommend this with anyone who, you know, God forbid, ever uh, has to sort of deal with any sort of illness. Um, then study it, you know, get to know it. Uh, don't just listen to what the doctors tell you. Um, understand how to control your own um, um, body, you know, because at the end of the day, you know your body better than anyone else. Don't listen to what anyone else tells you. Um, so that's what I done. I, you know, I studied, I read, I read, I read to uh, understand my condition and how I thought I could manage it a lot better. See the body's now being clear coated, and you can finally see what I was seeing in my head. Uh, and I think we've definitely won. I'm really, really pleased, really happy. All we've got to do now is give it a flat polish uh, and make it look all shiny. Ready to go back on the G Wagon outside, and we'll be good to go. But I have to know that's in my opinion. Charlie, what do you reckon? Uh, it's, it's better than I expected. Yeah. I, well, when it first seen masked, I wasn't too sure. Now I've seen it with the, the base and the lap on top. It's, Come out alright, it's diff different sort of concept. Yeah. So we, uh, we won, yeah? Yeah, I'll tell you Yeah, boy. Okay, cool. Let's crack on. Crack on. No, you can't go home. I did. Come on, hold on, mate. Oh! Oh! Don't look so high. That looks really good, man. I actually think that design on there. You're very stealthy. The consultant in the hospital uh, arranged for me to have um, um, a sample taken out of the intestine from where, 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 where the issue was. So they put a camera inside, had a good look, 
um, and wherever they saw the issue, uh, well, it was like blemish, blemishes in my um, in the lining of the wall in the, in the intestine. So wherever there was this inflammation, they would cut a little piece out, uh, similar to like as though they were cutting a piece of wallpaper of a pattern wallpaper. So they need that little piece to figure out what pattern that wallpaper is. Uh, so they do that, um, but they set that set that little piece off to the lab to get tested. Um, but for some reason, uh, they couldn't figure out what it was at the time, or Another example would be they took a plain section of that wallpaper, not the pattern. So they, they had to do the whole thing again. So eventually they realized uh, and figured out what it was, told me what it was. I don't think nothing of it. Again, I wasn't really suffering too tough at the time. So I'm like, okay, Crohn's disease, I've got Crohn's disease, whatever. You know, you just get on with it. Because I didn't understand the condition so much at the time, I just continued with my life and continued with doing what I was doing and, um, you know, just getting on with life, really. And that's when... I started to feel the, the, the symptoms started playing up and things really started taking a turn for the worse. My first operation, when I went in, um, it was a failure. My body rejected the operation, um, it didn't want to know, and my stomach ballooned massively, um, and the, all the wounds, not only the skin wound, the internal um, cut with my uh, ab muscles, the fat layer, all of that, there was, it was all coming apart. Um, including the in, in, inside where they uh, cut the intestine and joint the good bits, even that was coming apart. Um, and inside where they had staples, that, those were pinging off and they were stabbing me. I was in like so much agony, I was in so much pain, it's unreal. Um, and they even said, I remember them specifically saying to my family that the amount of uh, morphine that they're pumping into me would kill a horse. You know, they, there was nothing else they could do for me. And um, at one stage, I started having these seizures and <clears throat> they came about after the second operation because when I was rushed back in after 11 days what had happened was the operation we was telling them over and over again in the hospital my family were telling them that look there's something really really wrong with Cash um, he's not right his, his stomach's ballooned it's oozing constantly and you know um, he's in a bad way his stomach's so distended it's unbelievable all of his stitches have opening up the wounds opening up it's all infected um, but it's only when I got like to life or death that the doctors decided to do something about it. Um, so they rushed me back in, did the whole operation again. Um, inside was completely full of um, fluid and pus and infection and that sort of thing. <coughs> um, and they'd done the entire thing again. But this time, what they'd done was instead of the, 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 the thinner stitches, if you like, they used some serious double stitching type of stitch they used on me and when I woke up I was like you know how do you know this is going to work they're like we don't that's the only thing we could think of this time to make sure it doesn't split open you know um, but the second time when I woke up from the operation I woke up with a bag a stoma bag and I was like well, what's going on here you know you never told me I was gonna have a bag they're like we think it's the best thing for you at the moment you know you're gonna have to have a bag initially when I went in for my first consultation before my operation and stuff they said oh you'll be fine you know we'll, you'll have the operation within three four days you'll be you'll be fine and you know within two or three weeks you'll be back at the gym and so little did I know you know I was in for for the long haul this was a this was a serious situation um so I had the second operation I came out of here had the bag um but straight away the, the pain that I was uh, experiencing at the time is indescribable um I went into seizures, my heart rate hit 268 beats per minute for an hour. And if anybody, anyone understands, uh, in comparison um, to Usain Bolt, like one of the fastest runners in the world, I'm, I'm, I think he's around 180 when he's at his top speed. Yeah, my heart was hitting 268 beats per minute and he was doing that for an hour. Um, and lo and behold, um, you know, I came through it. Uh, in a really bad way, I was, I was like massively weak. I had no strength, I had nothing left in me. Um, I didn't even have the will to fight anymore, but it happened again. The next day, bam, another 268 beats per minute, around that sort of thing as well, um, heart rate. Uh, again, it was roughly for an hour. Doctors ain't got a clue what to do. You know, they, they, they were stuck. They just had to let me get through it. Again, you know, I clenched my teeth so hard. I mean, my eyes rolled up uh, out my head and um, I don't really remember it much because obviously I was having the seizure. But from what I was, I was told from family, um, they just said like, you know, you was you was clenching your teeth, your eyes had rolled back up into your head, and you was just gritting your teeth, um, and you was in, in, in massive pain. You was having a fit. 
um, again, I pulled through that. The doctors weren't listening. You know, the doctors didn't experience it or see it, so they didn't know what to say or do. So um, the next day, when the doctors came to see me, um, I said to them that, you know, I need to be transferred and get the hell out of there because you guys are going to kill me. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I also said to them that if you don't give me something called growth hormone, <coughs> um, I'm going to use it myself. They were at, believe it or not, they were at, actually at the end of um, any ideas. They had no idea what to do. They were completely lost. Um, they said, you know, give us till today. Let's see how we go. Um, let's, you know, try and find a way to get this under control and get your pain down. Um, and let's get you kind of, you know, level. Um, so I gave them the benefit of doubt and said, okay, this is the last chance I'm going to give you um, to put me right. So, you know, do what you got to do. But what happened uh, a couple of hours later, again, um, I ended up having a, a massive seizure, such a big seizure this time that they said to my family, <coughs> he's not going to make it. Um, call you, call his family, call everyone um, that you need to call. The hospital was completely packed. And he's now flat and polishing it and getting ready for uh, the car, which is more or less ready now. And uh, to speed up the process, we're using the heat lamps. How's it going, Addy? Okay. Good? Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon, 15 minutes, really? 20, maybe. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. But yeah, I think another couple of hours at least before this is completely ready. The flattening process takes a long time. If you want that glass show or finish, um, you've got to really flat it nice. Um, get all the little imperfections out and all those sort of things. So once you've got it to that stage, then we'll be putting the mop to it and polishing it up. And that, that on, its, uh, on its own takes uh, a good little while because that process isn't just a, a one stage, it's a three, four stage process to get it up to, uh, up to scratch. But once that's done, we'll show you how that looks um, and the car complete. Happy days. Yeah, boy! Get out my emblem. It's nice, huh? Nice, yeah. Very nice, very good. Because I remember when I was coming in and out of this seizure, people were just walking in crying after me and stuff, and I was like, yeah, you know, what the hell's going on? Why is people coming in like this? You know, and then I'll go off again. I remember my sister saying there, standing there looking at me, saying, just look at me, look at me, stop looking up, stop looking up. <clears throat> this is because my eyes are rolling back up in my head, and I was fighting it. I was trying to bring my eyes back down to concentrate on my sister to try and fight this thing so I could not have this seizure but then when as soon as my eyes went up it was I was gone again so yeah I mean I was, this time around um, they said to my family look he's not gonna make it um, so I'll be prepared and that was a really tough time for everyone you know everyone at that time my partner at the time my family my brothers my sisters my, my friends that were all there as well I remember the actual doctors um, who performed my main operation they were in theatre at the time um, I don't know if they were during an operation or they just finished, but they came running, running to my assistance because um, the ward doctors had called them and said, look, Mr. Ahmed's having this seizure. You need to come and see him now because this is now the third time and you need to see it. So thankfully they did see it. They witnessed it. They watched it happen. Um, I remember them having a huge needle that they wanted to stab me in the heart with. Um, uh, but I pulled through. Um, Thank God they didn't do that. When I left, I left with a bag on my stomach and I was taking a handful of pills every single day um, and that was for the next nine months. So that obviously, that took its toll on my relationship um, and you know, she couldn't handle um, the way I'd become, you know, with the depression setting in and the stress and the strain um, that I was putting on her as well and the relationship. Uh, you know, it just destroyed it, to be honest. Always criticising me, man. Everything I do. Yeah, because you are criticising me. I'm not criticising you. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Well, you asked me what to say that time, and I told you what to say. And then when you done it, you didn't say it. So don't ask me. What you say? What the hell, man? What you say? What you say? What you say? What you say? What you say?
the jack wall. Praise the jack. Praise the jack. Praise the jack wall. So what I'm doing right here is marking out the route for tomorrow, um, which is the uh, Mental Health Matters Christmas Supercar Parade we're holding. Um, once I've done this, um, only once the vehicles are all registered, we will be um, releasing these to all the participants of the parade. Yes, yeah, so no one's actually allowed to know the route because we don't want a whole load of unwanted sort of... Uh, crowd gathering uh, or, or cars which aren't really suited for the parade to kind of intervene and um, cause more problems for us but yeah so I'm just uh, mapping out the route which uh, is all based around the central London area I can't really say too much um, well I can because it's not really going to be uh, all this will be done by then but um, yeah it's going through uh, uh, Battersea Park is the meeting point and from there we're going to drive through to uh, Sloan Street, to Knightsbridge, past uh, Harrods, um, back into Piccadilly, back down um, onto Palmall, to the end point which is uh, Haymarket in, uh, yeah, in Palmall. So uh, yeah, so it's going to be um, a nice uh, steady cruise to make sure all the cars are keeping together. But yeah, so it should be good. So if you don't mind, got a lot of work to do. Bye! Happening. What's happening is I'm trying to finish this car and it's flipping stinking Albanian behind me. Won't let me carry on with my work. Yeah, it's going on BBC as we speak. I'm a celebrity, bro. What's going on to the BBC? Yeah. Everything. No, it's not going to go. Especially the Elvis part. No, it's uh -huh. not. No, bro. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> what the f What is this, bro? It's what? Professional, professional badge, bro. Yeah, this looks cute. I'll keep it. It's not going to come off. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Exclusive premium developments, vented carbon bonnet for the G Wagon. Thank you, Cree. <laughs> One, two, actually. <laughs> 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 I'm not speaking. He knows everything I asked him to do, isn't it, Sanji? What did you say? <laughs> Tomorrow, I'll have the pleasure to drive this uh, beast to central London. So, uh, as you can see, the G Wagon is nearly complete. We're just doing all the final last minute sort of touches, going around the car, making sure there's no sort of imperfections around the car, putting on the badges, the stickers, and basically more or less just making sure it's perfect for when the customer receives it. Nine months later, I had the operation again, and this time it was to reverse the bag to take the bag off, reconnect my um, intestine. And uh, it was then the long, slow journey for um, the doctor to let my intestines wake up again um, and the area that was actually operated on. So they had to see if food was gonna pass through there again this time and uh, without any complications. There were complications, the operation again wasn't um, very successful. Uh, my body, my body doesn't seem to like having operations for some reason, but I got over that anyway. And then the fourth operation was only uh, about a year and a half ago now, where where they took the bag off and they closed the hole up, they have to put a mesh inside because it was like like a hernia. But that mesh had tore, um, and it it caused my stomach to completely bulge out, and it was it was really horrible. It looked like there was like I don't know, I don't know how you describe it to be honest, but 
Um, imagine a flat belly and it had a massive lump on one side. So I couldn't even walk around with t-shirts normally and um, it was really embarrassing as well. Um, although everything was like working okay as far as my you know, uh, digestive system was concerned, that was, that was okay. It was causing complication because uh, of the hernia. Because of the hernia, my intestines kind of spewed into it and that was causing um, uh, like food not to be able to pass through that because um, it was kind of like knotted there. But anyway, they got over that. I had to have another operation and they put, I think he mentioned two grams worth of mesh inside this time to try and stop it from coming out. Obviously I told him that, look, um, I will be going back to the gym as well. You know, so that's important to me. So if that's a factor, which it probably will be, obviously I'm gonna be putting that strain on my um, stomach from lifting, then, you know, I think he doubled up the mesh that he put in to make sure that will happen again. <laughs> We're nearing the end of the day. We've got 15 minutes before the car wash closes next door. So we're wrapping it up now. We've got another five, 10, 10 minutes or so before we can get the car out, get in the car wash, get it washed and clean. And we're off to central London. Now tonight, we'll be meeting someone really special. I had a phone call this morning, half past six in the morning. In fact, um, I'll get a message on my Instagram from the daughter of the prime minister of Kuwait. That's royal family right there. That's, that's a princess of Kuwait. Um, she's really inspired by what we're doing um, with the whole, a campaign for mental health for, for the uh, cruise tomorrow so she's really really happy about that she wants to get involved so she will be riding with us so it's really uh, it's an amazing news I, I can't even really describe how overwhelmed I am about that but um, even more so we are meeting her tonight for dinner so I'm gonna get the G-Wagon ready wash cleaned up got to go home spruce up sort myself out and hit the road and we hit, we're going straight up to Hyde Park um, to her home so yeah stay tuned last minute preps on um, on the GTR uh, this is for the purge kit through uh, the front grill of the car it's got a purge kit where it blows out like steam or nitrous oxide which is what I used before uh, and you can also use CO2 and it just simply just purges out into atmosphere and it just looks really cool if you remember in the, I can't remember which one was it, in Fast and Furious when um, he pulls up in the R34 GTR Skyline, he was purging out the uh, front wings with the bumper, honestly. Too Fast and Furious. Huh? Too Fast and Furious. Too Fast and Furious. Really, I shouldn't know, but there you go. week now Friday just making sure I'm on top of all the um, invoices and estimates that need to go out to the insurance companies to get approval uh, yeah so um, it's got to be uh, done in the next hour so um, they can approve it basically for next week so we've got cars coming in for the following week but yeah that's about it really not long to go now but um, I'm sure uh, everyone's had a Busy, hectic week, and uh, yeah, thank God it's Friday, eh? So this is what it's all about tomorrow. We are supporting Hussein Manawa's campaign for mental health. Mental health matters. People suffer in silence and we need to make some noise about it. So we definitely will be making some noise tomorrow.
for the most part, I just carried on. Um, you know, I went back to work and I was doing what I was doing. Mentally, you, you're, you're never the same anymore. You know, you, you'll never be the same from coming out of something like that, being, you know, a big semi and a half stone bodybuilder. Um, generally, uh, it, like fine in every single way in, in terms of looks, uh, state of mind, um, being able to just do things, just run and walk and jump or anything. I couldn't do any of that anymore. You know, even just a short walk became um, a mission for me. I couldn't even walk for, for 30 seconds without puffing out. You know, I just became so unfit, so unhealthy. Um, but, you know, you have to carry on. Um, but, yeah, as I said, you know, uh, it cost me my marriage in the end because, you know, all the depression set in and all the rest of it. But, you know, it's life, I suppose, isn't it? It's just, you just got to get on with it. I've got a beautiful little boy now, the most gorgeous little boy. He's nearly three years old. Um, so something good has come out of that. Um, and that's, that's who we live for now, you know live for my son, uh, my family, my wife now. Um, so yeah, you just got to get on with it and not complain. There's, you can't just sit there and feel sorry for yourself. You know, you've got to live for them. That's what's important. The way I look at it is, uh, I look at this illness as a blessing. <coughs> I've said that since day one, but many of you won't understand this and probably after I explain it, you still won't understand it. But this is due to um, my religion. I'm Muslim, as you know. Um, and can you hear them? Can you hear them in the back? That's my wife coming on from work. That's my sister. They were greeting them. So can't they just say hello? What? We just came home. I'm I'm being filmed. I'm celebrity. Yeah, right. Whatever. Look, look. Come in. I'm talking. Hi. That's my lovely sister. Look, my lovely I'm sister. I'm a celebrity. I've been in the film. Yeah, yeah. This is the lovely hello. wife. Say hello. Say hello to the kids. Kids, come in. Come inside. Come inside. Come, bring your sister. Give me a kiss. Give me a papa. Give me a kiss. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. There you have it. Now you know why this campaign uh, is uh, important to me. So <coughs> I think it's important to get the awareness out there why mental health really matters because you see. You guys didn't think that I have any problems. You know, <laughs> mentally I might be okay as far as, as, far as you, you can see. Look at these two. Um, but there's a lot of underlying factors that you, you never knew about um, and that are there and that will always be there because at the end of the day, um, you know, I will always suffer in silence because the condition is there, it will always be there. You know, I'm on medication for the rest of my life. Um, I will still, I will always have issues with going to the gents and stuff like that, you know. Um, I'll always have issues with uh, nourishment. Come in. Um, you know, but it's, it's part of my life. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, um, I see it, see it as a blessing. And I know many of you will understand why that why i say that but that's due to my religion um as i was explaining uh i see it like it's a it's a second chance at life you know so it's like all the sins and stuff that i've committed in the past and growing up all the crazy things that i've done you know upsetting my parents and not listening to them um making them cry keep them up all night you know getting up to nonsense um, I just feel like it's a second chance at life, so going through this illness and suffering is uh, like an expiation of my sins. So that's how we see it, that's what Islam teaches us and, and it, it helps me actually, um, it keeps me strong mentally in my mind, you know. Um, it's probably one of the most biggest factors as to why I actually do get on with it, um, because I truly believe that uh, it's from here on now. Here on now, that everything that I do matters. Yeah. Whereas everything that you know from my past has been completely wiped clean. The slate's been wiped clean, um, and how I live my life now is what, what's important. How I do right by my parents. How I do right by my kids. How I do right by 
my friends and family, um, and that sort of thing. Ain't that right? Am I a good uncle? Do I look after you? High five. <laughs> what was that? Look at this. Ain't she gorgeous, look. Ain't she gorgeous. Ain't she gorgeous. You're gorgeous too. Yeah. And your tongue, your big fat tongue. <laughs> 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 so the moral of the story is uh, life's too short that's my advice to you if you've got any issues or problems with family friends loved ones just get over it man squash the beef <coughs> you know if it can be resolved resolve it because life's too short you know Tomorrow's never guaranteed. That's something that's really certain in life. You know, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow, no matter how rich you may be in life. You know, be humble, stay humble. You know, don't watch other people. Don't watch other people's lives. Um, don't hate on people. Yeah. Stop the jealousy, the en the envy. You know, just just watch yourself and try and be the best that you can be. Um, and love each other. You know. Do right by your parents. I'm uh, really happy. My condition is well under control. I recently got married as well to a beautiful girl and we're already expecting our first child together. Um, so really, really excited about that. Can't wait for my son to be a big brother as well, my son Noah. Um, so exciting times ahead. So simply all you do is eliminate any negative energy around you, you know, surround yourself with positive vibes, good people. Um, and that's the ultimate way to kind of uh, live a happy life, especially when you're suffering with these conditions, you know, it's just completely eliminate the bad things around you around you and um, the bad vibes of this. you know be happy simply be happy we are just leaving my house en route for the location which is Battersea Park um, we haven't actually disclosed the location yet to everybody but we will once we're um, we've got the convoy uh, yeah so we're gonna just fuel up make our way down to Battersea Park for around one o'clock and uh, where we'll, we'll have Hussein and um, our very special guest. Hussein? Yep. Yeah, we... Marco, look how dirty it looks. Oh, Yaris? Yeah. It's a nice Yaris, isn't it? It's alright, isn't it? Let's keep it at 50 miles of the gallon. So, yeah, it's an exciting day today. We're going to be parading around London with a bag full of supercars with mental health matters on it on London's busiest Saturday. Yeah, it's just a week before Christmas and um, yeah, the roads are going to be absolutely chock-a-block, so... Why not make it a bit busy, ain't it? Yeah, exactly, so... We'll, um, it's nice because obviously the families are out, the children are out and we kind of will give them something to uh, kind of entertain them, give them something yeah. to look at at the same time, represent for a very noble cause which uh, we all have uh, deep feelings about, which is... Uh, mental health matters and yeah. we're saying we'll elaborate on that yeah i think it's i think it's good because i was i've never really been a car fan so you what <laughs> no i haven't no i haven't but listen i'm, I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm not going but, nowhere but, but take that back but take that back fine i take it back i take it back i've been a car fan because i have my own car so um but this i was saying it's kind of like football right because it unifies people for a passion of something that's it and that passion in this case is the cars and you can be from whatever race, religion, background, creed, wherever you're from, one thing it kind of unites us is the uh, love for cars. Yeah, and that's, that's it. And we see it with stuff like Fast and Furious as well because like everyone loves the movie because of the cars. You'll see the reaction, it's going to be mental. Yeah. People's reaction, the just phones out and you know literally people want to be cheering you on because the sort of cars that we build and produce and show off. So to speak, because that's what we're actually doing. We're going to show these off to people who don't really get an opportunity to see these sort of cars, except in magazines. Yeah. So we'll show it off, and uh, yeah, they love it because it gives them. They love it. Yeah, that's it. We'll stop. Are you excited, Hussein? Yeah, I'm proper excited. I'm a bit. Um, I'm kind of using this as like space training because some of these are drive like they're driving spaceship. <laughs> no, so <laughs> um, so for me, it's a good. It will be a good experience, but. G-Force. In a, the G-Force of a G-Wagon. Hope you get your nappy, bro. It's a space <laughs> nappy. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. It's good to feel the support, you know what I mean? Because like, there's people coming today I've never even met. 
and there's going to be people Shahab's never met and people that everyone's never met because of the passion for two causes the cars and mental health and it attracts a new audience to talk about mental health which is the which is the man the older men the alpha male who's who drives these Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Aventadors and G-Wagons and you think exactly. these lot have got perfect lives like they don't have emotions and stuff because they're driving these bad boy cars when really they feel things just the same as everybody else exactly. does. So in effect we're like breaking barriers and buzzwords breaking, breaking barriers. barriers and removing stereotypes. People think that yeah we're all rich or we're all indulged in our own high class, li uh, class lifestyles but we're not. At the end of the day we do care about What's that my brother Cash. What's good people? Just feeling up, getting ready to meet the rest of the boys at BP. So spin it back around, we'll go straight to BP. Yeah? What's the plane? Yeah. Well, a, a, a 13. Yeah, that way. You got fuel in it from yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Spin it up there, isn't it, Cash? <coughs> yeah, so as I was saying... Uh, it's all about Red Bull. Yeah, it's all about Red Bull. So yeah, breaking barriers and uh, letting people know that we do care, they are important to us, you know, uh, we want them to get involved, we want people to... Uh, oh yeah, so we got another health matters, yeah? Mental health matters, yeah? And the government don't care about it because none of them turned up to the debate, so it's only uh, down to the people, it's for the people to come out here and tell them, we care about each other. I'm here today to tell the world that mental health really matters and I've all a few of my 